Hallelujah. Hear your hearts cry. He's passing by this moment. Your needs to supply. Oh, reach out. Hallelujah. As he goes by. Hallelujah for that today, Jesus. Hallelujah. Before we leave this atmosphere of prayer, I want us to call the Lord one more time. Three situations I want to bring before you. Brother Maynard's not with us this morning. Brother Maynard's not well. I ask that you remember Brother Maynard. Sister Debbie and Brother David, some are all not with us this morning. God knows the need there. They're not well in their body. Brother David's not well today. Mr. Debbie's not well today. Remember them. That's number two. Number three is going to lead us right into offering this morning. It is Mission Sunday, and usually for our church, what that means is that that you give above your tithes or you give above your seed for souls or anything special that you designate the cash offering, the general offering today goes to our missions account. And for our church, what that means is 50% of that stays in the local treasury here, and we use it to help folks with gas and maybe with food. It's available. The other 50% of it, we have done this now for some time where we send that to Heart of Florida Youth Ranch in Citra, the boys and girls home there. But today we're going to change it just a little bit. I was contacted Friday from the state office. Brother Cushman called me. Dr. Cushman was here a few weeks ago. It was his brother, Earl Cushman, called me. And we have a pastor in our state. They were making contact with regional bishops and asked us to call our churches on our region, get a hold of them, which I've done to the best of my ability. I don't know all the details. I know more maybe than I can share publicly in this kind of setting. But there's a Church of God pastor over in the Tampa Temple Terrace area that the enemy just seems to have attacked. And I know we're all fighting battles. I know we all got issues. The story that I've been told is that there's been a, a special uh, need in this pastor's life. And without going into lots of details, can I tell you that uh, they need our help this morning. My understanding is that they're living with no power in their home right now. My understanding is some other financial things have happened, and we can't fix all of that today unless God just divinely, divinely allows us to. But I told that state office representative, Brother Cushman, I said, Brother Cushman, I said, I can't fix all of it, but I am a pastor at heart. I said, and I, I, I believe in helping folks. I believe we will never go wrong in helping somebody. And I said, and because of your call today, what I will do is I'll go to my church Sunday, and it's Mission Sunday for us. And I'll take that offering, that general offering that is given, and I'll send that to the state office specifically for this pastor. If you will give me your word that when it gets there, that's where it will go. And he said he would. So I'll tell you what, Brother Cushman, I, I'll be in the office later tonight. This was Friday night. I, I'll be in the office Saturday. And I said, I'll go ahead and print the check. You can be seated if you like. And I said, I'll go ahead and just print a check on Saturday, and I'll get it to the post box Saturday. That way it'll go ahead and be on the way. I said, and if more comes in than what I've sent, I'll cut another check on Sunday night or Monday morning when we close out the books, and I'll send it. I said, and if, 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 if something doesn't come in to meet what I've sent, then I, I'm going to sow this anyhow because I want that pastor to know that he's not alone. Because I'm telling you, church, we live in a world where the devil tries to isolate us, tries to make us feel like it is just us, that nobody else fights a battle. Well, I can tell you this morning, if he's fighting a battle, I'm fighting a battle, you're fighting a battle, but we all serve the same God. Can you say amen? So we're going to do a little different this morning. Now we're going to, we're going to receive our tithes, our tithes belonging to the Lord, and if you ain't paid them, you might want to do that today. I believe it'll be a good day to pay them. If you ain't given seed for souls or you haven't given to the projects you committed to, today would be a good day to do that too. But then that general offering, that general offering, that missions offering today, we're not going to keep one penny of that general offering here. It's going to all be sent to that pastor over in the Tampa Temple Terrace area. I don't know him. If he was to walk in that back door today, I wouldn't know him. But I believe the man has a need. And if I can help that pastor, I believe God would be pleased with that this morning. Amen. 
You know how we do it on Sunday mornings. We start in the back and we bring it forward. We're going to do that again this morning. They're going to play. We're going to sing. We're going to give. And when we get all the way to the front, we're going to pray over that offering. And I'm going to tell you, your church has got needs this morning. We need God to move right here. You know how the enemy works. He'll, he'll, he'll talk to you and say, Now, Pastor, if you send $100 or $200 or $300, whatever it is, to that pastor, you know that'll pay a bill you got in the office that you need to pay for your own church. And you know what? He's right. But you know what? I serve a God that's greater than him. Can you say amen? And I just trust this morning as you give of your tithes and of your designated funds and out of the love of your heart for this pastor that not only will his need be met through our offering and others, but that this church's need will be met because I serve a God that owns it all. Amen. Ushers from the back, would you serve this congregation? And when you get to the front, we'll pray for it. While we're doing that, I'm going to keep singing this song, Reach Out and Touch the Lord. I feel His presence this morning. Amen. I believe He can move upon all of these needs, this pastor's needs, and Brother Maynard's needs, Brother Summerall's needs. And we're going to pray for all of them together in just a moment this morning. I'm going to ask that you give out the abundance of your heart. Ushers, would you serve this morning? Oh, reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. For you will find He's never too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply oh reach out and touch the lord as he goes by oh reach out and touch the lord as he goes by for you will find he's never too busy to hear your heart's cry he's passing by this moment your needs to supply oh reach out hallelujah as he goes by oh reach out and touch the lord as he goes by for you will find he's not too busy to hear your heart's cry he's passing by this moment your needs to supply oh reach out and touch the lord as he goes by oh reach out and touch the lord as he goes by for you will find he's never too busy to hear your heart's cry he's passing by this moment your needs to supply oh reach out and touch the lord as he goes by would you stand across this congregation this morning father we love you today Father, first and foremost, we give you praise and honor for sending your son Jesus to die on Calvary. Lord, we bring the needs of Brother Maynard and Brother Summerall to you. Lord, not only their life, but multiple families in our church, God, that need a physical touch in their life. I know that you're able. Lord, I know if we can just reach out and touch the hem of your garment, Lord, that we will receive life-changing power in our soul and in our body this morning. Lord, I pray you'll touch them and lead them and guide them. Lord, I pray for this pastor this morning. Lord, I don't know all the details. Lord, I don't know all the answers. 
But Lord, my heart was moved when I was called this week. And I pray that you'll move on that pastor's family. Touch his wife. Touch their church. Lead them and guide them in all that they do. Lord, and we bring this offering to you. Lord, I pray that every tithe that was given, Lord, you'll bless the 90%. Lord, the first fruits. Lord, move upon the remainder. Lord, and bless those families. Lord, the love gifts, the offerings. God, multiply it to meet the needs of our church. Lord, Lord, bless our families. Bless the ministry that we have. Lord, because of the name of Jesus, it will forever give you praise and honor and glory for it all. In the lovely name of Jesus Christ, we ask this morning, and the church said amen. And amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Usher. Hallelujah. You may be seated in his presence this morning. It's a good God. Can you say amen? amen? Amen. I want to welcome you at 11.50, thereabouts, to the 10.45 a.m. worship service. Amen? It just took us an hour to get here. Praise the Lord. What a joy it is to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, we've got some first-time guests in, I do believe. And so we want to say very, very specially to you, we're delighted to have you with us here at the Okoe Church of God. And usually Pastor Renfro does all this, but I'm kind of just in a groove this morning, so hold on. I'm going to take care of it this morning. Amen. Let me also say, I believe that today or right around today is Sister Phillips' birthday. A lot of her family is in with her this morning. So we want to welcome all of her family in the house of the Lord with us this morning as well. Some other first-time guests that are with us. If you're a first-time guest, I won't embarrass you. Just slip your hand up a little bit. Let us know they're out there, okay, any others. And some of you may need to be a first-time guest because I haven't seen you in several weeks, and uh, we, we won't hold that against you. You can start over fresh today, amen. God's a good God, amen. Amen, and we welcome everyone to the Okoe Church of God this morning. I won't take time for announcements. Grab your bulletin. There's a plethora of them in there, including uh, tonight after church is a very special time of food and fellowship. This coming week is a very special week. Just grab your bulletin. Um, I hope you saw it last week in your bulletin. I wasn't here, but uh, we did put in there as we uh, announced that uh, your youth director and your children's director uh, were appointed as the regional coordinators for our region. So be praying for them as they are expanding and extending their responsibility. I do want you to remember them in your prayer. Next Sunday is fifth Sunday. On the fifth Sunday, all of our students will be in the main sanctuary with us. That does not mean you can stay home. Amen. You need to be here as well but all of our children's church students will be in next Sunday morning on fifth Sunday I'll be preaching a family style hopefully a family worship style service and uh, we'll have dinner here at the church after the morning worship service we do that on the fifth Sunday and it's very simple you just bring your lunch to the church they'll have it all set up at 10 o'clock when we start Sunday school and you just drop your dishes off back there and we will have a great time of feasting on the presence of the Lord in this place and then we'll go out there after church next Sunday and feast together. Please don't go home. I'm looking for you next Sunday. I want to share a meal across the table with you. So bring a dish or two for you and your family and let's worship together here next Sunday and then back there after worship next Sunday morning. Next Sunday also is stepping up for Jesus and if you don't know what that is, it is simply simply an operating fund fundraiser where you give an offering uh, equal to your shoe size and uh, Pastor Renfro, if you'll help me out there and give me my shoe Amen. There you go. Here's mine. Okay? It's a simple project. It's a simple fundraiser where we give a offering in addition to our tithes. Our tithes are the tithes. They belong to the Lord. But next Sunday, we're going to receive a stepping up for Jesus. Hence the shoe offering next week. And you give an offering equal to your shoe size. If you wear an eight, then it's eight dollars. If you wear an eight and a half, it's nine. We round up for Jesus. Amen? And uh, I use this every time we do this. It's always fun and games with the kids. But uh, we call this a size, a size 25. So uh, if you can join with me and Sister Wendy and some of the other leaders next week, uh, we're going to be given an offering equal to $25 a person in addition to our tithes. And we're just going to have some fun with it. And we're just going to trust God to meet the needs of our church. Amen. It's his church. It doesn't belong to us. Uh, he's just blessed us with it. And we do uh, need your help in that. And I know next Sunday will be a good Sunday. 
you don't have to wait till next Sunday. I got a check in the mail this week. Somebody already sent in. They, they marked it, stepping up for Jesus. It was early, and I called them, and they said, is it okay that it came early? I said, oh, yes, it's perfectly fine. Uh, Sister Myra will know exactly what to do with it. So uh, we've done that, and thank you for your support of your church. God is always, always on time. Can you say amen? Amen. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word. I'm not going to preach long, I don't think. Some of you are laughing. I do feel compelled to preach maybe just a few minutes. I'll never get through it. I think there's 9 or 10 or 12 pages of notes. There's no way. And I've missed you in this setting. Three weeks ago, we were gone for a few days and some rest and relaxation. Oh, I was in church Sunday morning because that's what Christians do. Amen? Amen? Amen. Had me nervous there for a moment. And the Sunday after that, some of you were here, some I was here, but some of you were gone. And last Sunday, I had the privilege of preaching over at Pastor Raymond's church. We're going, going to put the first line up there. We're going to the book of Leviticus. And uh, last Sunday, my family was here, but I was over at Pastor Raymond's church. They are one years old uh, since they've become organized. And he called me a few weeks ago and asked me if I would preach <clears throat> their homecoming service. And I was delighted to do that. I was supposed to have an interpreter last Sunday. And uh, that interpreter, or one or two or three, ever how many was supposed to be there or available, never showed up at church time, so I preached without an interpreter. And uh, I learned one thing. They know how to have church too, amen? amen? Now, we're early. They started at 11 o'clock. About 11.15 they got started, actually. And they sang, and we sang, and I didn't realize how long we had been singing and worshiping. They made their announcements. They welcomed everybody. They turned me loose to preach at 12.40. That's not when I finished. That's when I got the pulpit at 1240. I said, now I've waited on this all week. Last two weeks, they're going to wait till I'm done preaching. Amen. I preached, we preached till about, I don't know, 115, 130, somewhere around there. We finished and went and had dinner. I think it was 3 o'clock when we got out of there that day. We are very much ahead of schedule today. Amen. Leviticus chapter number 6, one verse, verse number 13. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Read it with me out loud. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Oh my, do we need the fire to fall. Do we need a fresh visitation of the Spirit of God in our churches today? Father, I thank you for how you moved in this place this morning. I thank you for the fire, the presence, the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord, that I believe I've helped folks in this place today. Lord, and I want to finish this service if you'll help me, Lord, by reminding us and preaching to us. Lord, and calling us, Lord, back to an altar of prayer. Lord, that we'll have a desire in our life to let the fire of the Holy Ghost of heaven ever fall in the individual lives uh, around this place this morning. Lead us, uh, guide us, and direct us uh, in all that we do and we'll forever give you praise and honor and glory for it. In the name of Jesus we pray and the church said amen. amen. And amen. Shake someone's hand on the way down. So happy to have you in the house of the Lord uh, this morning. For a little while the Lord helping me going to start this message we'll never finish it. Simply entitled Let the Fire fall let the fire fall as I alluded to already I had no no understanding what they were going to sing for worship uh, some of the songs they grouped together I didn't have all of that detail and I got listening to them worship uh, practicing this morning and they begin to sing that song fire 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 I went oh I know we're in the right vein this morning hallelujah I love it when the Lord puts it all together like he does and I say Lord if there's ever a time in my life or in our church's life it is today that we need the Holy Ghost of heaven to fall. I don't need a man-made fire. I don't need an experience that's emotions. I don't need an experience that's made by music or by lights or by technology. But Lord, what I need one more time is the Holy Ghost of heaven to move in my life. Years ago, maybe you've been there. Give me a little monitor. 
Years ago, maybe you've been there, the uh, Yosemite National Park in California, they had a demonstration that they would call uh, the firefall. And from my understanding, uh, they would climb to the top of a granite cliff and they would light some barks. And, uh, and, and, and once those barks begin to burn, uh, those on the ground would, ho- would holler, Fire, firefall, firefall. And when they did that, they would push off, if you will, that, that, that burning bark and it would, it would go, down the, uh, go down the cliff. And I guess it was a sight to be seen. You can Google it. I did and it's there and, and it looked beautiful. And, 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 and I begin to think about that and read about that and, and think on some commentary that I studied on that. Uh, and I said, you know, there's no way uh, that a spiritual person could look at that event uh, and not be, not be reminded of the spiritual aspect of having that Holy Ghost fire evident in our life. Can you say amen? When that fire was ablaze, that call came out in the night to let the fire fall. And that fire would cascade down the side of that cliff. And the sparks and the embers would make patterns that was thrilling and and, and beautiful for the eyes of those around to behold. And I must remind myself that the voice of the Christian church would pierce the darkness one more time if we would make up in our mind, Lord, let the Holy Ghost, let the fire from heaven, let that burning fire, fire from your throne touch us one more time and we would be a voice in the dark world that we live in today number one this morning the fire symbolizes deity when you realize what it stands for in the word of God throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament fire has always symbolized deity Hebrews chapter number 12 verse number 29 God is called a consuming fire in Malachi 3 and 10 Christ is set forth as like a refiner's fire and you must realize that Isaiah labeled the Holy Ghost as the spirit of burning so we have incident after incident example after example in the word of God when fire symbolizes a deity when fire symbolizes more than a flame John the Baptist says in Matthew I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire I'm thankful for the fire of the Holy Ghost this morning. Amen. In the Old Testament, fire fell frequently upon the sacrifices. You've read of those. We've preached of those. Abraham in Genesis 15 placed a sacrifice before the Lord. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark. Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp passed between those pieces. God answered Abraham by fire when he offered the sacrifice. I'm going somewhere. You hold on. Because if we would offer our life one more time to Christ, if we would say, Lord, it's not about me, it's not about my church, it's not about my people, it's not about what color or what style or how hot or how cold, Lord, it's about me being in a right relationship with Jesus Christ. It's about me climbing back up on that altar saying, Lord, would you consume me one more time? We realize through Abraham, a declaration also at the tabernacle, when they dedicated the tabernacle in Second Chronicles, Solomon made an end of praying. Fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. See, fire came down from heaven and consumed these sacrifices as a sign of God's approval and acceptance. And you're wondering where God's at in your life. Can I ask you this morning, do you have any fire? I don't mean man-made fire. I mean, I, and I, I love it. it. It needs to be the best. Please don't make me go through all that again. It needs to be the very best and look good and sound good. And we need to do all we can for Jesus. But really and truly, all that pales into comparison. If I don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, if I have not allowed my life to be consumed by the presence of the Holy Ghost, if I have not said, Lord, I'll get out of the way for you to have your way. Lord, I need to know that that fire is going to fall again. Not so others will be uh, able to see. We do get to see when that happens. But Lord, more than that, I need to know that you are approving and you have accepted the sacrifice that I brought to you. Because you see, there's folks that are bringing some things unto the Lord that he doesn't want. 
There are sometimes we bring things to the Lord that He's already told us, I don't want you involved with that. I don't want you there. I don't want you dabbling in that. But yet we try to offer it as a sacrifice and God doesn't accept it. So I have to remind myself, Lord, I understand what fire means. I understand it's part of the deity. You use it. It symbolizes who you are. Lord, the Old Testament tells me that when fire would fall on the sacrifice, it was, it was a sign of your approval and your acceptance. So I must ask myself, this morning uh, if I've not felt the fire if I've not experienced uh, the fire of the Holy Ghost if I've not uh, felt his touch in my body and in my life and in my spirit uh, in a long time could it be that he's not approving of my sacrifice let the fire fall the fire also was a symbol the presence of the Lord when Moses was on the back side of the desert I could just imagine what it was, be, what it was like to be Moses and to be taking care of father-in-law's sheep and see a bush that caught a, a bush that was on fire but wasn't burning. But if you study that very carefully, you will find that the voice that came out of that bush never came out of that bush until it was already on fire. Follow me. If you if you read that through closely, and I believe I have some of and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame and out in a fire out of the midst of the bush. It might be well for us to notice that God did not speak out of the bush until it was a flame. Now why is that important? Likewise, possibly, listen, He will not speak through Christians in our day until our hearts become a flame. Follow me. Because if you don't have Christ on the inside, then what are you offering to those on the outside? How can you speak for the Lord if you have nothing on the inside that He's done for you? How can you give to others if you yourself are empty? How can you share with others the miraculous, wonderful power, saving knowledge of Jesus Christ if I look at your life and there's no fire? And I'm reminded going through the example of Moses that fire teaches us through the sacrifices of God's approval and God's acceptance. But through Moses' example, we can also say, hey, there's got to be a fire because the Lord is not even going to speak until our hearts are aflame. Give me some more examples, Pastor. I'm glad you asked. Like Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 20, when the word of the Lord was in his heart, like a burning fire shut up in his bones, he could not withhold his witness. So what are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying when you let the fire fall in your life, uh, when you let the Holy Ghost move, and when you let the Holy Ghost have His way, uh, you may think you can keep it quiet. Uh, oh, but you'll be like my brother Jeremiah. It will come a point as it burns on the inside uh, that it will be like fire shut up in your bones, uh, and you will have to give a witness uh, of what Christ has done for you. Uh, but when you do, uh, people will know that you've been with the Lord. Hallelujah. Isaiah 6 and 8 also gives us an example. When his lips were touched with a live coal from the altar, he cried out, Here am I! Send me. Oh, what it would be good for us to one more time say, Lord, here am I send me. Lord, I can't do it. I know you can't do it. Lord, I, I can't do it without your help. I know, son. I know, daughter. But if you'll get into my presence, if you'll let the, the, the fire from the heaven itself, if you'll let that coal touch your life, you'll be just like Isaiah and it won't matter what you've been through. It won't matter where you've been. You'll stand up and say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Number two. I believe I can get through this one. I only got five of them. I'll hold the other ones, maybe. Number two. Fire symbolizes the protection of God. Most of you don't know this. But I'm going through just an issue in my life. If you want to know details, you come tell, ask me and I'll tell you. But it's to do with some business transactions, nothing to do with the church. 
but it's about to drive me absolutely crazy. And I have found myself in the last few weeks praying a prayer very similar to this, okay? Without even knowing where I was going today, I have been guilty of praying, Lord, just put your angels all around that location. Lord, just protect it. I don't understand the dynamics. I don't really understand what's going on. I am frustrated up to here with it. But Lord, if you'll just put your angels around it, it'll all be okay. And then I find myself studying. And then I find myself realizing and understanding and reading that the fire of God symbolizes the protection of God. And I said, oh Lord, let that fire fall in my life. Not just in my life, but in that lady's life. And in those kids' life. And everything that we touch, let it be protected by the hand of God. The protecting presence of God. Round about his people is often symbolized by fire. The children of Israel were guided with a pillar of fire by night. It was there both for illumination, it was there for light, but it was also there for their defense. That same pillar of fire that protected them and guided them by night also served as a smoke screen of protection from their enemy in the daytime. Zechariah Chapter 2, verse 5, according to his writing, says he promises to be a wall of fire round about his people to protect them from the enemy. I said, oh, hallelujah. I said, I'm sick and tired of the devil. I'm sick and tired of what he does. I'm sick and tired of what I deal with. I know my God's on the throne, and if Jesus comes today, praise God, I'm out of here. My ticket's been punched. But until that time, I must remind myself that I don't belong to myself. I've been bought with a price. I've been sealed by the blood of the Lamb. I've got the presence of the Holy Ghost in my life, and there will be a fire around about me to protect me from the enemy. This issue I mentioned to you, I called Mama. You know I love Mama. I love Wendy, too. But I love Mama. I'm married to her and my mother birthed me. If it went for Mama, she wouldn't have me. Hallelujah. I'm hurrying. I know what time it is. Stay with me. Stay with me. I share with Mama some of this frustration I'm going through. She got nervous, worried about it. She said, son, are you... I think she used the word scared. I knew what she meant. Are you concerned? I said, no, nah, not really. I said, if they come and blow my head off, I'm going to heaven. <laughs> Don't say that to your mama, okay? <laughs> I just, that's just the way I felt about it. I got some of that righteous, holy boldness the other day. and I went over, got a call, and I went over there to deal with a little bit of business. I got there, and I thought, this probably ain't the wisest thing in the world to do, but I'm going in. I get over there and everything's fine. I'm still here today. They ain't shot me yet. And I said, Lord, sometimes I just got to realize that if I truly do things according to your word, if I truly allow myself to be led by your spirit, now I'm not saying I'm perfect. You know that. I've been here four years. You know that. I mess up, I stumble, I fall. But if my heart beat, if my intent, if my desire is to follow passionately after God, then I believe when we're moving in those things in our life that He will be a wall of protection. He will be a fire around us. He will guide us through those valleys and He will guide us through those battles and He will guide us through that firefight. And when it seems like the old song says, all hell assails me, I know I don't have to worry about it because in Christ Jesus I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fire has a purifying effect for the saints because it says that we are to be tried with fire. Fire is an emblem of God's Word, igniting and warming our human hearts. I tell you one thing, you get a cold night outside, even in Central Florida, and you get a fire going, and if there's folks around you, you will find that they will gravitate a little closer to the fire. Can you say amen? Oh, it works the same way in the spiritual world. If we'll let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn in our life, it ain't even got to be a big one today. If we'll let a little flame start, and we'll begin to pray and we'll begin to seek and we'll say God do it again that fire will grow and when that fire grows people from the north and the south and the east and the west will come to find out where the fire is coming from yeah. sister Rachel come I gotta hush I'm gonna read through this they're gonna have it on the screen after this if you don't want to pray you might want to check your wood because it probably is wet amen <laughs> hallelujah I want the fire. Can you say amen? 
Go ahead, next screen. At this critical time in human history, we are in critical times, amen? We are in a mess, to say it lightly. And if Jesus doesn't come soon, I say, Lord, just help me. Help my kids. Lord, I don't want to grow up in this bunch of nonsense. But in these critical times, when the rivers of worldliness have drowned, drowned the fires of the church, what's happened? In these critical times when indifference reigns where zeal used to be, in times where ease is present and concern is absent, in times where program has replaced passion and the only fire left is in the church kitchen, in a time where a church boasts in strength of her numbers and wealth but is too weak to bring forth a son or a daughter upon her altars in a time where membership in the church means no more and in most cases less than membership in a lodge in a time when church attendance is mere convenience and the places of the world are a rival to the church stay with me in a time when church services are so highly mechanic, mechanicized, mechanicized until church, until God is organized out of the program. I told you you're going to want to pray after this. In a time when liberalism and human reasoning scoff at the simplicity of the Pentecostal worship. Church, I ain't ashamed to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, a tongue-talking Christian. Amen. Amen. In a time when the church is gaining in numbers and dwindling in power, it is time for the church and the ministry to cry forth, let the fire fall. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In all of those things that we deal with, it's time that we as men and women of God, it is time as we, that we as a ministry, we as a church, we as a denomination stand up and say, Lord, it's time that the fire one more time fall. Oh. I believe in a service like this, God's challenged us. God, I, I, I want to be all that you want me to be. And I wondered this morning, I, I'm not finished. There's, there's three more points. I'll save it till later. Not tonight. Later. Maybe. Is there anybody that says, you know, it would do me good to let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn one more time. Oh, it would do. I'm going to tell you, for me, it will be good for this pastor to let the Holy Ghost burn through him one more time. I laid in this floor last night on this platform. I cried out to the Lord and said, God, if you don't show up tomorrow, it ain't going to be worth nothing. Say, God, if you don't help me tomorrow, it ain't going to be worth nothing. It's just going to be a program, and it's going to be a meeting, and we'll come, and I'll see a few new folks, and I'll shake a few hands, and we'll go home and eat and take a nap. But God, if you'll let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall, I believe lives will be touched. I believe needs will be met. I believe circumstances will be changed. I believe direction will be given. I believe families will be put back together. And I believe what the enemy meant for evil or for bad or for destruction, the Lord can turn around and make it good. But I got to have the fire. I got to have the fire. Can you say amen? Is there anybody? I'm not going to beg you this morning. Is there anybody? Sister Wendy, come. Is there anybody that would join me in this first lady in this altar and say, Pastor, I want the fire to fall. Not just in my life, but in my church. I want the fire to fall. Would you come? Would you come and find you a place to pray this morning? Would you come and call upon the name of the Lord this morning? They're moving. Don't wait. Don't wait. Jesus is coming. Today could be that day. Come on, Sister Wendy. Today could be that day. Come on, church. Call upon on the name of the Lord this morning. Lord, send the rain, pour out your spirit, let 
the fire. 